All right, metals were pretty straightforward and easy to understand. Semiconductors are a little bit more tricky to understand. So we're going to split this video into two. First, we're going to talk about intrinsic semiconductors, which means we're talking about pure semiconductors. We haven't doped it. And then we're going to talk about extrinsic semiconductors, which are things that we've doped. We've added elements intentionally to modify its electric properties. So with intrinsic semiconductors, uh, these things do have a band gap, right? So the Fermi level is lying between our valence band of acceptable states and conduction band of acceptable states. But it's in this middle ground where there's no states available. But for semiconductors, the band gap is typically small, typically something like less than two electron volts. Some examples, um, group four elements like silicon or germanium, these have band gaps of 1.1 and 0.7 electron volts respectively. But you could also end up with mixtures of groups three together with group five, right? Things like gallium and arsenic or indium and antimony, right? Or you could go with things like two and six, right? Group two and group six, so cadmium and sulfide, zinc and tellurium, right? And these all will produce intrinsic semiconductors. But the trend is that as you go down from group four to three, five, two, six, what you're seeing is you're putting um, a bigger difference in electronegativity, right? Uh, at group four, they have the same electronegativity. Group three, five, there's a little difference. Group two, six, it's a big difference. As you increase the difference in electronegativity, you make the bond more ionic, right? It becomes more ionic and therefore it's a stronger bond. And so the band gap increases. So your intrinsic semiconductors are going to be the most conductive for silicon and germanium because the gap is small and the least conductive as you move down this series, okay? Another thing to note about intrinsic semiconductors is that the concentration of your holes in the valence band and your electrons in your conduction band are equal because if we draw our picture here, the Fermi level is right smack dab in the middle for intrinsic semiconductors. So for every electron that was down here, right, this was filled with electrons, for each one that you create a hole, like let's say four of those get created, you put four up here. So now you have four electrons and you have four holes, okay? So they're in equal concentration for intrinsic semiconductors. And what's cool is that both of these are available for conduction, right? If you think of like our schematic for electrical conductivity in a circuit, you have electrons traveling this way, right? But that means if your current is going that way, what you're really having is your holes travel that way. So these will travel opposite directions, but they create current in the exact same way. Like it's the same current, the current is the same direction, but your electrons, which are negatively charged, go one way and your holes, which are positively charged, go the other way, right? But they both contribute to the electrical conductivity. I think it's useful to think about intrinsic semiconductors by picturing this lattice of silicon. Let's imagine we have pure silicon, right? We know that silicon is bonded to four other silicons and it is not flat sheets. I'm showing it as a two-dimensional plane here, but we know that this is actually a three-dimensional diamond cubic lattice. But consider this for a minute. What do we know about each silicon? We know that each silicon has four electrons, right? So if we start drawing these, this has one, two, three, four. There we go. Every single silicon had four electrons. And so by all sharing, they end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They have a filled shell and so they're happy, right? So what has to happen in order for us to get conduction, right? We had to promote one of these things from its filled shell where it was happy, right? This filled valence band. We had to promote it across the band gap up to the conduction band. So what that looks like is we're literally taking one of these electrons right here and we're pulling it out of that bond right? So now this is a free electron, which is negatively charged. And that created a hole, right? So now we have a hole, which is positively charged and an electron, which is free. And what that really meant is that we pulled it out of that bond. And we stuck it up in a higher energy level bond, right? So it didn't have to physically move out of the lattice. It just went to a higher energy level. It's at the same position, just at a higher energy level. But what happens is when we apply an electric field across this thing, right? If we apply an electric field across this silicon, you know, group of atoms, now these things which are charged, our hole and our electron are going to move in response to that field. The electron is going to travel this way and the hole is going to travel that way. Now, how does the hole travel? It travels by the nearby electron coming and occupying that hole and now the hole has moved right here and then maybe this one will occupy that hole and now it's moved to there. So it moves by hopping in that lattice and the free electron is now in an empty conduction band. So it just essentially moves without worrying about holes coming uh, and an electron coming and filling the hole where it was. OK, so that is intrinsic semiconductors. Um, again, because every time we created an electron, we also created a hole. We have the same concentrations, right? 
electron and hole contributions are included and they have the same concentration. So if we're going to calculate our electrical conductivity, remember for a metal, what did we have? For a metal, we said that the conductivity is equal to our number of our carriers times the charge of an electron times the mobility of our electrons. Here we have to modify that, right? We can't just use that expression here because it's not a metal anymore. It's a semiconductor and we have to account for both electrons and holes. So what we end up with is this expression right there. The conductivity is the number of electrons, n, right, per unit volume. That's number of electrons per unit volume multiplied by the charge of an electron multiplied by the mobility of an electron. But we have to add to that the number of holes. We call that p, right? That's the concentration of holes in number per centimeter cubed times the charge of an electron, since it has the same charge, it's a missing electron, it still has the same charge, it's just positive, multiplied by the mobility of our holes, right? Now what's interesting is that the mobility does not have to be the same, it won't be the same, in fact, in materials it can be different, but the concentration of N and P will be the same for an intrinsic semiconductor, where you haven't doped it, okay? So N is equal to P is equal to I, right? NI is usually what we call it, our intrinsic carrier concentration. If we know our intrinsic carrier concentration, then that allows us to simplify this expression up here to this one, N sub I times the charge of electrons times the mobility of our electrons plus our mobility of our holes. That will give us our electrical conductivity for an intrinsic semiconductor. Now, in the next video, we'll take a look at how that gets changed when you dope your material so that it is more conductive.